mistakes. They can be so frustrating, annoying, time-consuming, expensive, shameful, and the bane of our existence. Why do they keep popping up in our world all the time? Could there be any other purpose for them except to make us feel about that big? Is there any other way to conceptualize these things with any hope? I'm Dana Hicks, a licensed clinical mental health counselor, and I have some tips that can help you sidestep all that uncomfortable stuff and skip to the beauty, yes, I said beauty, of the mistake, as well as bring you closer to the person that you are always meant to be. I want to share a story before I give you the tips about the way that I learn, okay, and a situation that I found myself in because of this. So, I was in third grade, and there was a math problem put on the board, and I was doing, I was working really hard, I was dedicated, I was like, working the steps to get there and somebody else answered before I did and for the rest of the class I berated myself spent my time just telling myself oh, I'm so stupid oh my gosh why am I even in this class I feel this small right and I turned my thinking off because my my emotions just went right and I let that be a wall I stopped at that wall of uncomfortable feelings and it kind of wrecked my relationship with math from that point on <laughs> okay so that's a really sad story but that happened okay but after looking at it I realized that, you know what, the way that I learn is not by rote memorization. It takes a lot of energy for me to do that. I can, but it takes me so much energy. The way that I naturally learn is to see things from all kinds of dimensions, from like a systemic level. And then from that framework, I can not only answer one question, but I can answer a lot of questions because this is a system that I'm working from rather than doing one thing at a time without any context of where it's coming from, right? So at the time, I did not know that. But if I were going to respond more functionally to this, I would first tip number one would be that I just give myself permission to take some time with this. It is a struggle and, and it, it's okay. I deserve time to understand this, right? And then number two is thank those uncomfortable feelings because they're actually what they're doing is getting your attention and saying, hey, something's a little off here. It needs a little bit more attention. Look under the hood, if you will, and see, learn more. Get more into this activity so that you can learn all you can. So thank those uncomfortable feelings for getting your attention, right? And then imagine them in a bubble floating off into the Netherlands because they have done their job and that's okay, you can release them. Give them permission to float away because they've done their job, they've alerted you, okay? Then come back to the activity and with no judgment whatsoever, let whatever information that you have learned bubble up to the surface and by that i mean 
give yourself time to play with it, to try it in way different modes. Like in my example of the classroom, maybe I would say, hey, teacher, I need some time to figure out this number thing. Like how, how are people doing that? And let's practice, perhaps. Or give myself time with a number line to see what comes up for me in the way of connecting the dots. So here's an example. This is a system, right, of 10. So say, see the numbers on the outside equal 10. And then if you walk one step in, which would be the two and an eight, they actually equal 10 too. And then it goes on like that, three and seven, and then more in four and six. They all equal 10. How cool is that? That is a big picture. If I was to play with this until something magical for me, the way my brain works, clicked and set, saw the big system, then maybe, maybe my relationship with math would be so much easier. So number five is ask yourself, what about your actions? Now that you have this information, do you need to change in order to avoid the mistake in the future? So my answer in this example would be, maybe I need one of these systems during math time on my desk so that I can reference it and practice it and use it so it becomes part of me. So step number six is, after having gone through this process, what did you learn about yourself? How do you view yourself differently? So my answer to that might be, you know what? This doesn't mean I'm stupid. It actually, after answering all these questions, means that I'm pretty smart because I was eventually able to solve the problem and not just one problem, but several problems at once. So to review, number one is give yourself time and space to just notice what's going on during this mistake and advocate for that time because you are worth it and you will glean so many treasures because of it. Number two is thank your uncomfortable feelings for getting your attention. Number three is let the uncomfortable feelings drift away because they have done their job now. Number four is ask yourself, what have I learned about this activity because of this mistake? And how has that changed the big picture? Number five is knowing that information, what actions do I need to change in order to avoid this mistake in the future? Number six is ask yourself what you have learned about yourself through this whole process. In conclusion, I want you to know that you are worth the time it takes to let go of those emotions, the uncomfortable ones at least, and look under the hood to see the connections that are there, the deeper connections that could help you solve not only one problem, but several at once. The insight is there and you are worth the time it takes to get there. So after going through all these steps, I'm wondering what was the most intriguing part of this for you? Please let me know in the comments. And also feel free to share and subscribe below with no strings attached.